Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter for your basic Sorgonomics. Today I want to talk about lowering that barrier on creative, your creative outlets. What are we doing with that? And and, and, and we'll get to that in a moment and why I think it's important for that to be lowered. Um, but first, please check out everything at Sorgatron.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Find out all the stuff coming up uh, and over the next few weeks, other shows, uh, my blog, and all kinds of fun stuff there. Thanks. So... Uh, I talk about a lot this week about uh, the digital nomads, about the the gadgets that that we're able to, you know, it's not just the Apple stuff that's cool anymore. Microsoft and, and Google are both putting out really good hardware um, that that you can hold in your hand and it feels solid and it's just great, better than the crap PCs that we've had in the last 15 years, right? And even back to the beige boxes of my Aptiva IBM computer from Radio Shack. But... I think uh, also consider that lowering the barrier, just lowering to get into video, get into audio, get into uh, creative works, get into making something, get, putting what's in your mind on digital paper, so to speak. And I think when you look at it, now I'm in the video. I'm definitely in the video. Uh, I got into video about 1998, right? I still had eight 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 metal, millimeter tapes, right? Uh, I first learned to edit on an AB recording deck. That means you put a VHS into this slot, you put another VHS into this slot, and then they both record to a third VHS. I believe I'm getting that right. Oh no, it's not even that. I didn't know, it wasn't even that. We had two VHS, it's been so long. We had two VHSs. We're still, still saying VHS. And basically that first tape has all the footage that I shot, right? All that footage of the Blair or of the uh, Do Witch project that you could find on YouTube, Google it on YouTube, YouTube it. Yes, it's out there. You have all that footage that we shot in my backyard, and then taking it and figuring out the in and out points and setting those and letting it record these sections to a secondary tape, and that's how it works. That was a linear editing. When we talk about Final Cut, when we talk about Premiere, we talk about I can slice a thing and take this this bit of video and move it over here visually, and that becomes the new way that that plays out when we hit play. That is non-linear editing. Now, if I was 10 years beforehand and I wanted to do video, how hard was that going to be? You got to think all the greats that we've seen over the years were slicing video. I recently watched The Aviator, and uh, there was the... Hounds of Fury, Hell on Wheels, Hell in the Air, I forget what, Hellhounds, uh, his, his uh, airplane dogfighting film that took way too much, it was way over budget, and they're shooting the actual planes, you know, hundreds of them in the air, uh, probably not that many, but a lot, okay, a lot more than I feel comfortable with it from the way this is depicted in obvious CG fashion, and, and how... They had all the people going through and taking the shots and then, you know, hey, use use roll B, uh, this scene, you know, and how big that was. And to think about how much work went into that to create something cohesive. You talk about uh, these are, you know, old sh old movies are slow and plodding and, and aren't as boom, 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 snappy and, and not as great a flow because think of how long it took for them to get to that point. And now when we're at our non-linears, uh, we can we can get in there and 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 edge edge milliseconds off of a clip and 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 time that so it feels just right. I mean, I do it a lot myself. I you know a lot of really kind of editing on the fly. It, it's almost like directing a symphony at a certain point where we're like, boom, we're just taking this, point it over here. Okay, let's pull this in. All right, let's put a filter on here. Okay, let's bump up that sound a little bit. You know, and and you can go so much quicker. And that's why it's so great to be alive at this time in this kind of medium. But if I was 10 years earlier, would I even be doing video? Would I have been so interested in video that I would have gone that extra mile to learn how to slice film? Would I have been lost when the di digital revolution came some 10 years later around 2000 and video became a thing and, and, and watching it transform into this thing now where anybody can do video on or even stream video on a device like this, so small and brandishing some friend's company. Um, I think that's, that's, so what does that mean? 
kids are picking up iPads and they're making stuff. When they're just going on here, opening up paper and, 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 and using basically finger painting without the mess. We all have iMovie. We all have garage band that makes us better musicians, right? And it's a good starting point, and we're creating things, and, and people are, are not letting technology get in the way. I mean, you hear me on here all the time talking about don't let the technology get in your way of podcasting. And Brogan at the uh, podcast is for saying it doesn't matter what mic you're talking into. It matters that you're talking, that you're recording, that you're creating. And so much has gotten out of our way. And that's why that's why it perplexes me. Not perplexes me, but it frustrates me when people are like, oh, I, 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 I can't get to it. I haven't gotten to it. Now is the easiest time, and hell, it's going to be getting, it's going to get easier. Let's let's be honest. The stuff that's happening now in podcasting, I couldn't have even imagined when I started this ten years ago. You know, the fact that you can walk around with this and basically do a sh- video show, and I was like, I was impressed when five years ago we could take something like this and uh, this iPhone and 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 do just some audio, just a little bit of audio, do ten minutes of audio. You know, and it's just something in my pocket. I think I think that opens you up. You don't get bogged down with the details. At least with the details that get in the way, and you can work on the details that matter in the creative. You can get a little more into it. Don't get too crazy. You still gotta ship. It's a whole other topic, but you still gotta ship that thing. Don't be so much of a perfectionist that nobody ever sees the light of day. Could you imagine? If I wanted to go in and fix every shot I thought was a little bit off when I would edit, well, I'm live editing the, the, the wrestling shows. I'm like, well, that could be a little better. Oh, that could be a little better. Especially if you're a creative. And and the more the more I think about this and look at other people that that respond to this and, and, and see get in their heads a little bit on these interviews that I listen to, I, I think a lot of the creatives are never really happy with their thing. But could you imagine? If I was never really happy with my thing and wanting to get better and I still had to learn to walk when walking was 10 times harder than it was right now. Think of, I want to pull this out of the air, but think of a uh, learning walk analogy. Let's say you learned to walk. Uh, if you were born earlier, you got to learn to walk. The gravity was about 10 times what it is now. How much effort does that take for you to learn the basic idea of learning to walk and your muscles to, to change? Versus now, it's lighter. We can walk a lot easier. The technology behind walking is a lot easier. Great, we're done walking in half the time. That spends, means more time that I figure out how to run. I figure out how to skip. I figure out how to jump and become better at those things. I think that's it. It was hard to walk when it came to creating things several years ago. And now now we get to cut that time down and we get to spend more time on this part of creative. I used to have to code a site myself if I wanted a site. Then WYSIWYG editors came along. Now we just open up a Squarespace and drag some stuff around and we have a website. Great, website's out of the way. I can start making my thing. That isn't going to be a website. It's going to be words. It's going to be video. It's going to be audio. Website is the last thing I have to think about, but it's the thing that needs to happen. And I didn't spend a week doing it. I didn't spend three months figuring it out. I spent a day figuring it out, and we're up and running. So, Take a look. Maybe the hurdle for you to get started is a lot smaller than you think it is. Check everything out, Sorgatron.com, where you see me jumping my hurdles and so much more, and I can help you with your hurdles. I really need to get out of this analogy. Um, check everything out at Sorgatron on Twitter if you have any commentary. Let me know. We'll see you guys next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.